If there's one thing that I've learned from this era of reboots and requels is that you can't go home again. Now, you may think that you want to see your favorite 1980s and 90s sitcoms and movie franchises revived for the 2020s, but it's not the same. The time and place that made them great has passed, and no matter if you want to admit it or not, there's just no going back. Sadly, the latest victim of this frustrating trend is Flashback 2, the sequel to one of my favorite games of all time. This was one of video gaming's seminal science fiction stories, with many critics at the time comparing it to Blade Runner. And I mean, if Blade Runner can come back all these decades later with an amazing sequel, then why can't Flashback? Well, I'm here to tell you to lower your expectations, because this is a frustrating and often broken follow-up that left me conflicted in so many ways. Yeah, this is my review of Flashback 2. For me, Flashback, the quest for identity, wasn't just another side-scrolling action game. It was a revelation that video games could have a deep and involving story that actually made you think. Using rotoscope animation to give the game a cinematic look, this took science fiction gaming well beyond the usual run-and-gun antics of Contra. It had real twists and turns, fully realized characters, and a downbeat ending that left you, the player, to reflect on what the story ultimately meant. It had everything that I was looking for from a game in 1993. It also had a sequel. I'm of course talking about Fade to Black, the 1995 follow-up that picks up right where Flashback left off. While nowhere near as impactful as the original, the sequel continued the adventures of Conrad Hart and his fight against an evil species of morphing aliens, now with 3D graphics and a less ambitious story. Now, it's at this point where you're probably wondering, if Fade to Black is the sequel to Flashback, then what the hell is Flashback 2? Can both games exist, or does this completely rewrite the first sequel out of existence? The answer to those questions is yes. Well, and no. Actually, it's complicated. This brand new game picks up about halfway through the events of the first game, which is bound to create a lot of confusion right off the bat for anybody who's played or even remembers the original story. Why are we back on Titan? Is this game rewriting the events of the first flashback? What the hell's going on here? And again, the answer to those questions is complicated. Here's what you need to know. Conrad Hart crashes on Titan after a failed attempt to get to Earth, forcing him to flee from the cops, work for a gangster, and team up with a group of resistance fighters who are attempting to save the world from a species of shape-shifting aliens who are looking to overthrow the government. Along the way, he'll need to rescue captured friends, track down useful gadgets, and of course, visit familiar locations, all while getting to the bottom of what the hell is going on here. The truth is, I kind of love how baffling the setup is. Instead of some video game character being dropped in the middle of a jungle with amnesia, it's us who feels like we've suffered a major blow to the head. This got me excited right off the bat as it signaled that we might be getting the same kind of twisty science fiction story that made the first game so damn good. I couldn't wait to see how they got themselves out of this paradox, especially if it had something to do with crazy science or fun futuristic tech. I wanted my head to spin with all the exciting twists and turns. And, at least in that sense, Flashback 2 delivers. If the main reason you loved the original game was for its ambitious sci-fi story, then there's a lot to like about this sequel. It does a surprisingly good job of mirroring a lot of the story elements found in the original game in both subtle and obvious ways. For example, we spend the early parts of the game taking freelance jobs in order to enter a contest, not unlike what Conrad had to do in the first game. You'll also go out to some of the iconic locations from the original, like the Jungle of Titan. But just when things start to feel a little too familiar, the game does a good job of subverting your expectations and adding something new to the story. This is a sequel that'll leave you guessing, and there are some revelations deep in the story that have the real potential to reshape how you view the original story. 
You know what? This is one of those games that should have been released 25 years ago. Believe it or not, the story compares favorably to the original and actually leaves the franchise in an interesting spot. I mean, the narrative here is much more engaging than the other sequel, Fade to Black. The problem is that by 2023 standards, the original story feels simple and maybe a little bit rudimentary. Yes, it was ambitious for its time, but it's been usurped by a whole library of recent science fiction games. In that sense, some of what made the first game so special and unique is lost on the sequel, which is that nagging reminder that nostalgia is all about time and place. Story aside, Flashback 2 makes a number of changes to the way the game plays. Thankfully, it's a lot more like the original Flashback than the woefully outdated 3D gameplay found in Fade to Black. While not exactly side-scrolling, the sequel gives us a lot of fixed camera angles that'll have Conrad running left and right. The animation isn't rotoscoped, but it's definitely made to resemble the look and feel of that first game, though I would argue that the controls are a lot more forgiving in the sequel. In a lot of ways, this feels like a throwback to the early days of 3D gaming. It essentially takes the gameplay of the original and slots it into a slightly more three-dimensional world. You can really feel the addition of the 3D elements in the jungle, where paths tend to split in more directions than just left and right. That said, when you get into the more enclosed areas, like an underground mech facility, the level designs take a more 2D approach. While I'm sure that some will balk at these changes, I think what they were going for ultimately makes sense and is a good way to evolve the series without making it feel too modern. And then there's the combat, which I simultaneously love and hate. The good news is that it's easier to shoot at multiple targets with a new dual stick approach. Yeah, it's a little awkward when we switch from 3D to 2D sections, but the game accounts for this by giving us a generous lock-on system. Some of my favorite moments in this game were honestly when I was dodging enemy fire and shooting aliens coming from all sides. When it works, the action can be a lot of fun. The problem is that when it doesn't work, the action is absolutely miserable. I mentioned the targeting, and while the lock-on system certainly helps, it doesn't always work as advertised. This leaves you vulnerable to a lot of cheap shots coming from all sides. What makes this especially frustrating is that a lot of those cheap shots take a surprising amount of health, which makes Conrad feel too fragile. The game is a lot of fun when the enemies are manageable, but things quickly spiral out of control when you have a big group ganging up on our hero. This is especially bad in the back half of the game, when every enemy takes a couple dozen bullets to take down. This is clearly a problem the developers realized early on, because you can see them trying their hardest to offset this issue. For example, when Conrad dies, you can just resume right where he left off, no questions asked. There's also a shield suit that'll give him a little bit more protection. And if that doesn't work, the game is littered with health kits that'll fill up your life at a push of a button. There were times when I was holding 40 or 50 of these kits, and it's not like I was saving them for a rainy day. I probably picked up hundreds of these items, which is a constant reminder that the game knows that you're taking cheap hits and the developers don't know how to solve the problem. Now let me tell you, that's not the only problems the developers don't know how to solve. To put it as politely as I can, Flashback 2 is broken. It's a kind of busted that seems like it affects every part of the game, right down to the ending. You'll notice it early on, when the game makes it hard to pick up an item or trigger an elevator because the prompt is incredibly finicky. You'll notice it when you crouch through a narrow area and get stuck in the level geometry, something that just kept happening repeatedly throughout the course of the game. There's one point towards the end that wants you to switch between your flow meter and the glasses that you use to determine who is and isn't a morph alien. Simple enough, right? Wrong, because this game simply refuses to let you make that switch, even when there's a hint box telling you exactly how to do it. I had to go back several save points just to get the damn thing to work right. Oh, and then there's the ending, which didn't even play for me. When I beat the game, all I saw was a black screen with a skip button and some audio. No visuals or anything, just a black screen of nothingness. And that brings us to the rampant frame rate issues which keep this game from looking as silky smooth as the rotoscoped original. 
This is something that constantly plagues the action scenes, but it doesn't stop there. You see the awful stuttering problem show up in some of the more important cinemas, especially towards the end. This is a shame, because there are a lot of cinemas that don't have this problem and look a lot better. In fact, I'd argue that most of the cinemas in the first half of the game have a cool style and are executed well. Ugh, and did I mention that the voice acting is just all over the place? Conrad is fine, but the supporting cast feels like the developers hired their friends and family to get the job done, not professional voice actors. For example, when you run errands for one of New Washington's most notorious gangsters, the voice actor comes off like somebody doing their best Godfather impression. Ah, welcome to Stoli's, son. You'll find lots of great stuff here, but unfortunately not your friend. He did some shady stuff. Some important people really wanted to talk to him all of a sudden. It's even worse when you're talking to random people on the street who only have a few lines to perform. I found the bad voice acting to be distracting, and it pulled me right out of the experience. It would have been so much better if they just did it without voices. Look, I could go on, but you get the point. Flashback 2 is a big disappointment. Sure, it has some cool story elements, and I love how confusing the setup is. But the game is just too broken to be recommended. And that's a shame, because I like a lot of the story and the small things they've done to make it feel like a flashback game. You can really see what the game was going for, and there was a lot of potential in that idea, but the game was let down by its execution. But the truth is, even if they were somehow able to fix all the bugs and performance issues, you'd still be left with a game with frustrating combat and terrible voice acting. Yeah, that sucks, and the fans deserve a lot better. Three decades after the original burst onto the scene, Flashback 2 attempts to rewrite the story with mixed results. It's a follow-up that is sure to divide fans by taking a lot of liberties with the narrative and making some controversial changes. However, there is one thing that we can all agree on, and it's that the game is broken. From the busted frame rate to the rampant technical bugs to the fact that the ending didn't even play for me, Flashback 2 feels like it needed a lot more time in the oven. Those who overlook the game's many issues will find a rewarding story that leaves the franchise in a genuinely compelling place. But I would argue that the payoff is not worth the frustration. Flashback 2 is the most disappointed that I've been in a game in a long time. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's the most disappointing sequel that you've ever played? There are a ton to choose from, so I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with a look at the best 16-bit shooters of all time. Let me tell you, it's an epic list that you're absolutely going to love. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.